Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm Nathan from mastersofmusic.com. Um, I'm gonna give you guys a review of the Audion ID4 today. This is a USB uh, audio interface. It's bus powered. Uh, I've been using it for the past couple of weeks, so I'll go ahead and show you guys uh, what I like about it, what I don't like about it. Let's go ahead and talk about the hardware first. So it's made out of solid metal. It's very um, durable feeling. It's got metal all the way around, and it's not thin metal either. It's nice and solid metal. The, uh, Knobs are aluminum as well. They got a nice uh, amount of resistance to them so you don't accidentally bump them and adjust it. I like the amount of resistance that they have. Uh, so on the front here we've got the direct input jack so you can connect your guitars, basses, keyboards, whatever. And then over here on this side uh, it's got the dual headphone jack. So uh, you got the small jack and the large jack so that you can just uh, use whatever you want. They're both tied to the same output uh, which is also the main output. So whatever you have the main volume set at as you can see right here it'll show you as you adjust your volume what you what your level is set at this thing's got an infinite scroll both ways it's kind of got these little notches as you move it along uh, and then you can also fine tune between the notches so it's like really precise uh, okay so on the back um, we got the combo mic input in the line uh, so it's got the same mic preamp as the higher end audience um, interfaces uh, and we've also got the main outs right there and the USB port of course and then the uh, phantom power switch. So then on the front we've got the main controls here. This is for your DI uh, input gain and then we've got the mic input gain right here. Um, and then this is your playback uh, so that you can adjust like uh, your direct monitor if you want to go all the way to this side you can get your direct monitor like with your guitars. Um, you get that sound directly through your speakers and then once you uh, go here you'll just get your sound from your DAW playback. We've got a mute button right here which I think is pretty cool. I think uh, all interfaces should have a mute button. It comes in handy. All you do is just tap that. Mute the volume. And you can also tap this. It will go to dim volume which takes it down by like 15 decibels so it just like uh, it's like a quick way to get the sound to go down. So uh, there's also this ID button right here. So this is kind of the unique thing about the Audion ID4 uh, here. If we tap this button, you can use this as a, it's essentially turns it into a scroll wheel. You like your mouse scroll wheel. You can use this uh, like in your DAW programs for setting up uh, different parameters. You can use it to scroll through libraries and stuff like that. So another thing you can do here is if you hold both of these buttons at the same time and adjust this, you can see up here, it will adjust the panning of your input. So you got your mic input, it's the top level here, and then the uh, DI input. So you can balance that out so that you have like one uh, on the left side and one on the right side, or you can center them up like that. So you can uh, set the panning for the uh, individual inputs. So I like the layout of the ID4 because uh, with the mic uh, input in the back right there, it keeps the uh, cord going that way. And then I use a angled connector for guitars, so it keeps like the layout really clean. The, all the wires are going out the back and then you just have the connectors here in front for the headphones and the DI input. So I just noticed something, uh, you don't even have to have the computer turned on. I have my monitors turned on right now and it actually the DI goes through the speaker monitors just without the uh, computer being turned on. So then you can see uh, when you're adjusting your input gain, uh, it shows it up here. Like I was saying, the bottom one is the input for the guitar, and then the top one is the input for the mic. So when you're playing along, you can see what your uh, input level is right there, and then you can adjust your gain accordingly. I usually set it right here for passive input inputs, and then I also have uh, some active inputs, some Seymour Duncans, and it has to be turned down to about right there. But it does work well with the active pickups just as well as it does with the passive pickups. So then once you have this set to DAW, the output shows up here as, uh, as the lines instead of what you're playing as in your input. They don't show up here anymore uh, unless you have it set over here to the white section of the input right there, input monitoring. So the guitar input sounds very clear and clean. There's like no noise or static or anything like that. So I do really like the sound of the uh, direct input. Right, guys so I switched over to uh, screen capture mode here I wanted to show you uh, how the uh, audience uh, settings work here so it's a little bit different than I'm used to so usually you like go in here to Ableton or whatever you hit the hardware setup and it'll launch whatever like application you have to adjust your uh, buffer size with but that, that doesn't work with the audience that way you have to go down here to your uh, little control panel right click on the ID4 application 
and then you can sit, change all your uh, settings from here. Um, you've got the different latency modes. So this is it's different than uh, other interfaces I've used because you have these uh, latency modes and then the buffer size. So you got these two different options. So all right, so I can't actually change these or screws up the uh, recording of the audio with screen capture. So um, what it does is if like so I have a change selected on the low right here it runs pretty well and low on my system um, And then you see right there It will gray out like the 64 samples when you have it on low So you have to have it on minimum to get the 64 sample option to work But on my system it will not work at all even a 0% CPU. It just crackles constantly uh, 128 works pretty well. It works very well actually with uh, Pro Tools, but Ableton it starts crackling uh, about 30% so there's some sort of issue with this not working super well with my computer so uh, that's mainly the the main negative as you can see right here so it runs well at this setting 44 256 I actually use 48 usually but uh, so the milliseconds is 15.6 uh, that's just too much for me for playing guitar or uh, like electronic drums or something so I need to get it under 10 milliseconds and I can get it under 10 milliseconds with the 128 second or 128 sample setting but then I do get uh, performance problems that, uh, when the CPU starts getting up there. So uh, I just can't get the right balance between uh, performance and latency on this. So they also have this automatic setting. For me, it never really works well. It always seems to induce crackling whenever I have it set there, unless I go to one of these higher settings, which just it just maxes out the uh, overall latency way too much. All right, so here's a few. I'll just show you these two or give you a listen to these two direct input uh, recordings. There's absolutely no processing. It's just the straight DI uh, guitar plugged into the uh, jack um, just for uh, recording purposes. <laughs> So that second one, or that last one there, is recorded with the uh, mic in front of an amp. Uh, so I'm not really going to be one to talk much about the mic preamp. It's the same preamp that they have in their high-end devices. So, I mean, obviously, it's, it's known for being good. But, I mean, I don't even use vocals. So I'm using it right now, obviously, for screen capture. But I don't use it for vocals or anything like that. I barely even uh, record amps since I mostly use amp sim. So I'm not really going to comment on much on the preamp. But it does sound good to me. It's nice and clear. Same with the direct input signal, or the direct input recordings you heard right here. Very clear. Um, it, it comes through very clear, sounds nice, uh, just with the DI. So um, I do like this uh, interface uh, for everything except the latency issue that I have. So, so I really like the output sound quality ID4. It seems a little bit better than my Focusrite interface that I've also been using. Uh, I, I got a review posted of that if you wanted to see that as well. But um, the sound just seems to be a little bit better. You got a little bit better uh, low end details. There's a little bit more punch, it seems like. So I really like the sound quality out of this. Uh, it doesn't use the same converters as the ID14 and the ID22, the upgraded models. Uh, uses some AKM converters instead of the Burr Brown converters, but I still think they sound uh, really good. I haven't actually heard the uh, ID14, and now I'm kind of curious to see what it sounds like. Uh, but yeah, I, I really think it does sound really good uh, with those AKM converters. Uh, I got more about that written in the written review if you wanted to check that out. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this review right here. Check out mastersmusic.com for the written review. I got more details in there. And I also have a comparison with the uh, Focusrite 2i2, uh, which I have actually settled on using here lately because of the lower latency. It just works better for me with uh, direct input guitars using amp sims and whatnot. So uh, check that out if you'd like that. I'll put the link in the video uh, as well. So uh, thank you guys for watching. You all have a good day. And subscribe if you like these videos.